Hey there. Are you responsible for the legal compliance of your website, SaaS web applications, or mobile apps? If you would like to better understand what the current digital accessibility requirements are for state and federal laws, such as the ADA or Section 508 here in the US, or the upcoming European Accessibility Act and other laws abroad, then hang tight, I've got you. In this session, we're gonna walk you through the basic legal framework, which will be expanding over the next two years. And we'll cover what you should be doing to comply and pitfalls to avoid. Okay, let's get this party started. Hey Kim, I heard you had an accessibility jam session going on. You know it. Let's drop the needle. And good timing too, as we've got ADA Title II, Colorado's HB 21-1110, and the EU's European Accessibility Act all coming online over the next few years. And that doesn't leave much time for teams to meet these standards. Absolutely. Now is the time to focus on accessibility compliance of websites, mobile apps, SaaS web apps, and cloud software plus content. That's a bit of a mouthful. Let's just fold that into one term, web accessibility. Good call. But regardless of what type of digital platform we're talking about, they all need to be compliant with the web content accessibility guidelines. The WCAG is basically the international standard for ensuring your digital property is accessible to people with disabilities and seniors. The guidelines focus on principles that help ensure that no matter the disability, whether visual, auditory, cognitive, or motor, everyone can interact with your site or SAS effectively. And these accessibility standards aren't just about checking the box. They ensure maximum usability for every potential customer to join the party. That's right. WCAG, Compliance and Accessible Design, represent the pinnacle of usability. And the better the usability, the higher the engagement. And you know what usability and engagement deliver. Conversions! Oh yeah, we like those. Plus, meeting accessibility standards demonstrates your commitment to DEI, which attract top talent and customers with disabilities and seniors too. Huge point, boomers are our first digital seniors, and whether they admit it or not, they face the same barriers. And boy, do they have deep pockets. You certainly don't want to exclude them. Now, Let's dive into what those laws look like now, because we have a few substantial updates. Starting with the ADA, there is first Title III, which applies to commercial entities and has been the focus of most of the litigation of the past few years. Then there is ADA Title II, which was updated in 2024 to clarify that all state to local public entities must make all of their digital platforms and content WCAG compliant by 2026 or 2027, depending on population. And in Colorado, there is the new HB 211110 law that similarly requires all state entities ensure all of their digital systems are WCAG compliant by July 2025. This adds heavy pressure on state agencies and their providers of websites, SaaS, and mobile apps to move fast. Then, what might be even bigger is the European Accessibility Act. The EIA will apply to websites, mobile apps, SaaS, and content that any EU citizen can access. Remember GDPR? Boy, do I. Well, many expect this will be the GDPR for accessibility, and it takes effect in June of 2025. Yeah, the EIA is going to be big, and I don't think many even see it coming. But now you do, so let's talk about what you can do. Start by hiring an experienced WCAG auditing team to conduct a manual audit. Human testing is essential because automated tools can still only catch about 40% of WCAG issues. And yeah, you can bet that AI will eventually fill that gap, but it's not there yet, despite how the providers stuff AI into their marketing messages. Ha, huh. yes. And speaking of stretching the truth, 
Look out for overlay plugin solutions that make wild claims about being capable of making a website WCAG compliant overnight. We got a bit sidetracked there. The main point is to hire a team of qualified accessibility compliance pros like the Accessibility.Works crew, who not only know the WCAG inside and out, but also know the code. Experience counts here. It's not too hard to train someone to identify WCAG compliance gaps, but it's quite another to be able to speak geek to a developer and explain how to actually meet current WCAG requirements. A team of this caliber can then collaborate with yours through remediation and then conduct a verification audit once complete. Okay, great. Now, how do you show your compliance? So after your site is remediated and verified, you'll want your accessibility partner to author a VPAT for you. This is a voluntary product accessibility template, and it's currently the best way to show the level of WCAG compliance for your website, SaaS, or app. Then, when your website or app is WCAG compliant, you will want to have it re-audited periodically based on how active the site is, and certainly after making any UX changes. Wow, that's a lot. Sure, accessibility can be complex, but as long as you have a good partner by your side, you'll be fine. Let's wrap this session. Agreed. So, if you're managing a website, online software products, or mobile apps, do not push this off any longer. Make sure your website is not just technically compliant, but also truly usable for all users. Accessibility is about creating opportunities for everyone to experience your content fully. It's about avoiding lawsuits, sure, but more importantly, it's about doing the right thing, expanding your audience, and future-proofing your digital presence. Peace.